Hey guys, Jared here. I am going to show you today a complete bike packing bike. One similar to the one I rode across America earlier this year. And this one is set up for riding across America again, but from north to, to uh, south. That's heavy, it's like 55, 60 pounds. Okay guys. Uh, this is a mountain bike bike packing bike. So it's actually a mountain bike frame. However, I've set it up with drop bars as you can see here because a lot of times you're on dirt roads and you just kind of want to get down kind of like a road bike. So you get down and you have the kind of your lower center of gravity and kind of spread out on the bike, especially with the uh, tri bars right here. And the other thing is I have a shock on here to kind of take out the vibration and the bumps. And it is a lockout shock so I can turn it on and off. One of my favorite things about this bike is that I was able to set this bike up exactly for what I need. And that is very detail oriented. One of the things is I run a specific rear hub here, a hub that I've never been able to blow up over 20 years. And I thought, you know what? If I'm out in the middle of nowhere, I need to trust my equipment. So I specifically built this rear wheel off of a Hadley hub. Never blown one up, I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna blow one up. So that is what I have on the back there. The other thing is I run flat pedals because I like to be able to get on and off my bike all the time and I want shoes I can walk around in. So I want a really grippy flat pedal and in this case I'm running these Race Face Chester pedals. Super lightweight, composite plastic. Uh, but with really high pins in them so they really grab onto your uh, shoes. One of the most important things for me when I'm out riding is I'm always by myself when I'm doing these bike packing trips. So I wanna cover as much ground as I can in the daytime. And so that means being very aer aerodynamic. So if you look from the front end of my bike, you will see that it's a really streamlined uh, setup here. Everything is dialed in with the frame going this way. And I put all the gear behind my body or in a, in a position that it wouldn't be further out than my body. So I don't run any packs off of my fork. I don't run any side packs off the back of my frame because that's just wind drag and that'll slow you down. So when you're trying to co cover over a hundred miles a day, 150 is about what I'm planning on doing per day on the mountain bike, um, you've got to be aerodynamic. So keep it streamlined and really simple so everything is in line one of the things that i've done with this bike is i tried to be innovative about it so you'll notice here that this is actually a frame bag that goes right here however i wanted to utilize my bladder space at the lowest possible gravity for the bike to keep that weight down by the ground so what you see in here is actually a bladder a camelback bladder and i kind of crunch it down to fit the overall volume of this four liter pack right here and I slip it in there and zip it up like that and run the hose right up here. And I can just sip away as I'm riding. Works out really, really nice. One of the things when you're bike packing is to be as efficient as possible. So what I do when I'm out bike packing is I like to take my cameras with me. So I, I prefer to actually ride my bike with a drone. There's actually a drone in here, but my drone has residual battery uh, usage um, on the backside where my drone won't fly anymore because there's not enough battery space. So what I decided to do is to utilize my drone battery 
as my actual battery to charge my phone, which has all of my maps on it. It's got all my contacts, everything that I need to be out there. I do my emails while I'm riding. I basically run my company while I'm bike packing. So all that battery usage extra from my drone is now used to charge my electronics here. And it also charges my light, which is down here, and my rear light, which is here. I simply put them in here, charge them in here, and at night, I'm good to go. So first things first, I got my phone right here, which carries all my maps, everything. This is the key. I run my company from here. I can do this from the trail, so there we go. Now right here, we've got a little holder that holds the, the cell phone right here. And as you can see here, here we've got all the cords right here. These are cords for charging any kind of battery that we need. Everything from drone to uh, iPhone to lights, you name it. So right there, one drone battery. And also we've got backup rubber bands right here to, just in case my phone breaks off, I can hold it this way. These are always useful right there. National Park card, because you're probably passing through some national parks, so make sure you have that card right there. Saves you 20 bucks every time you enter a park. Always take an extra little flow valve right here for the Camelback. All right. Now right here, I won't take this off, but here we have our Knight Rider Lumina 1000. And I always use that on the lowest possible setting when I'm out there. So, okay, here we go. This is the big uh, pack here. First off, I've got a collapsible water bottle. You can put this into streams really easy, load up your water, and then fill up your Camelback bladder. So this is really key right here. Going in here, we've got every essential tool that you can think of here. Now, one of the things I did is I went around and tried every different bolt that you can possibly use that I would need on this bike. So this says Park Tool AWS, but actually I created this own tool myself, taking apart Park Tools and different size little Allen wrenches that I need specifically for this bike to utilize space. Had I not done that, I'd have three different Park Tools. So I've got this one here, which takes care of my cranks, and this one here that takes care of all the little things around the bike right there. And in here, we've got uh, wire cutters, very key right there to cut zip ties and so forth. Smallest little pump right there. And we've got a patch kit right there. Tire irons right here. We've got a valve remover right there. Spoke wrench. Many times I've been out there and tacoed my wheel on the trail. Right here, key. Keep your wheel straight. I will never travel without a chain breaker. Forget bringing a chain. Bring a chain breaker. You can fix it any size you want, whatever. I don't even bring links. Always use a chain breaker. Always take extra brake pads because you'll go through those in mountain biking. Take a rag with you. A second pair of brake pads. And right here we've got a tubeless patch repair kit right here in case I puncture a hole in my tire I can quickly fix it with this, this uh, Lazine kit. Now right here these are spare parts in case I break my bag in case I break some of the holders on these bags. Now I have been out on a trip before where I broke the bolt right here on my seat pack and this thing came down and I was able to jimmy it together but this time I learned just buy the little parts from these companies right here just in case. And right here, we've got some instant uh, patches right here in case you wear a hole in one of your bags. You can patch it up with a waterproof proof patch. You get those at Home Depot. Extra seat clamp, because oftentimes if your seat post slips down, you snap this bolt right here, you're gonna need an extra clamp. Um, I think this is key. An extra derailleur cable in case you snap your derailleur cable. And then on the back side right here, I've got another patch kit right there. This is a little vial of chain oil that I've got right here. This stuff lasts for probably about 2,000 miles right here. As you can see, I put this in a little eye droplet uh, bottle. And a third pair of brake pads, key. All right. Right here, I've got, uh, just in case it gets really cold out there, 
I have found that mittens are far superior to gloves. These things are super lightweight right here. They're made by Rab. Um, they compact down really small. And because your fingers are together and there's a lot of space, uh, insulation in here, your hands stay super warm with these little puppies on. So these are key, always bring mittens. Okay, uh, toilet paper. We'll always need that. Okay, right here, a lot of stuff in here. This is mostly electronic stuff. I've got another drone battery right there. I've got some business cards because people always ask me where I work, on the road, whatever. I just hand them a card and move on. Extra rubber band uh, phone holder because out in my last trip, I snapped one of the bands here and it was really inconvenient. So I have an extra one of these. Extra electrical plugs for if you do find a hotel room, you can charge in the wall, which is really good. That's key. Right here is an extra pair of earphones in case I lose one of my ear pods. Uh, this is my list of everything that's in this bike right here. Another plug in the wall, because when you get to a hotel room, if you find one, you're not going to be waiting all night to replug things back in. You're going to plug everything in once and you're out. You're out for four to six hours. You're not waking up. So you got to make sure when you go to sleep, everything's charged when you wake up. So you got to bring this stuff. Now I film when I'm out there. So I have a lot of sand discs right here just in case I run out. So there's multiple sand discs in here. Always bring a set of matches just in case you need to have a fire out there. This is for my GoPro and my helmet, uh, extra adhesive. Right in here, I got uh, extra blades for my drone. These are blades just in case, because a lot of times you uh, crash your drone when you're out there. These are carbon fiber blades. Uh, if you crash your drone and one of your blades goes, you're not gonna be flying your drone anymore. So most people don't fly a drone when they're out on bikepacking. I do, I'll show you that next. And then, Extra GoPro mount again, right there. And of course, some extra adhesive right there. Okay. Now this is key right here in this plastic bag. I've got one of my wool socks, always bring big wool socks, but you want to cross utilize your equipment and be efficient. So I always haul my drone inside of my wool sock so it's totally protected so here is my drone with my sock and i very safely haul this drone this mavic pro uh, it is a little heavy but you know it's just a sacrifice i'm willing to make to get some good footage when i'm out there and then the uh, rag to clean the lens i keep that inside of this holder so the lens doesn't move around while i'm riding so there's the drone okay now right here is my other sock and another plastic bag. And in this sock right here is my drone controller right there. So this I'll just hook my phone right into uh, this right here. And this is how I fly my drone right there. So, and again, it's carried in my sock. So just in case I've got my wool socks there. Okay, so that's everything in here. Now this bag here, this carries a secondary night rider. This is important because sometimes you actually lose your light. You'll be riding down the trail and in the daytime and at nighttime you go to turn it on, it's not there. This has happened to me more than one time on bikepacking trips. Always take a second light, but do not put it in a vulnerable position. Hide it away so you need it when you, uh, when you need it, you can get it. Now the other reason I use a secondary light is if I break something on my bike while I'm out at night, this is attached to my handlebars. I want something that I can just look around and see what's broken on my bike. So I'll utilize this Knight Rider right there. What else I've got in here is kind of the essential supplies in here. I've got some chapstick. I've got some bear spray right there. Um, it's just basically pepper spray. I'll use a smaller canister where there's black bears and I'll use a very large canister where there's grizzly bears. So this one here, this will be accessible once I'm out on the trail. Also in here, I've got some ibuprofen just in case your body swells up in some weird position. Um, 
I've got a bunch of uh, aqua tabs because you're gonna be drinking out of creeks a lot. So you're gonna wanna pop a couple tabs in your water source um, there. And then um, of course chapstick is just key because your lips just get torn apart when you're out and exposed all day for weeks on end. So those are some of the key things in there. Um, and those are essential items that I use a lot. Okay. And last but not least in here, I've got a toothbrush, a sawed off sh toothbrush, not a sawed off shotgun. So it fits in a little bag. And I've got a shaver, some toothpaste right there. Um, and a little brush just in case I find a place and I want my hair to look nice. Haha. <laughs> so that's just pretty essential every night right there. Okay. Now let's move down, down here. This here is my water essentials down here. Now, I always keep an extra of very important straps. So these are all tie down straps. These help in case I have to, um, in case one of these other straps break, I've got backups. They don't weigh anything. So you always bring these, bring zip ties with you, just in case you have to, uh, you know, tie things down on your frame, which you find out you have to uh, at times throughout your ride. So, and then right here is the Camelback right here. This is actually a full size 100 ounce Camelback and I fill it up just enough so it forms a tube like this and then I fit it down in there. So there's the Camelback. And right here are more zip ties, but in here more importantly are actually spokes that specifically are cut for these, these wheels right here. Because a lot of times if you go to a bike shop um, they're not going to have a spoke cutter and they may not have the spoke sizes that you need if you do break a spoke. So always take a couple extra spokes with you. And of course you need a water filter. And I usually keep that uh, right down here in the very bottom tucked away because I will pull out my Camelback and have to filter water. So aqua tabs and a water filter right there. And extra hose just in case your hose gets caught in your wheels and gets sawed off you're going to want this right there so and of course an extra buckle just in case you break buckles along in here and little uh uh tubeless tire sealant right here just two ounces just in case to give yourself a refill if you need it right there okay i think that's it here all right we're moving on to the other side the back end of the bike. Now everything up here that you see is things I don't use during the day because this is kind of a pain in the rear to get all this stuff off. So right here is uh, the only thing I do put back here is the jacket right here and because I will access this I'll almost always be wearing this in the morning and um, I'll want to take it off and sometimes if it gets cold during the day I'll want to access it so this is a full winter jacket right here and so you're going to want to always have this is kind of bulky but I hate being cold so I always take a full winter jacket all right right back here this is a very important bag right here now we unhook this right here and We've got, uh, I keep my rear blinking light always right here on this strap. I just kind of let it hang like that, it doesn't fall off. I've got it zip tied on there. Now in this pack, let's start off by bringing out the essentials that you don't usually need at all during the day, just at night. So the first thing here is a bivy. It's a full on bivy bag. It's actually a tent bivy and uh, it's made by Black Diamond. Um, you've got to have a 100% waterproof bivy because sometimes you don't have anything to get under and you just need to keep everything dry. So there's the bivy. Next in here. Okay, we've got a couple things right here. This is a heck of heavy item, but I think it's essential. A full on spare tire um, specific to what I ride right here. And I'll probably switch this thing out uh, halfway through the ride or when I find my tire looking like this, I'll swap it out and put this new one on there. Uh, and then of course I use Gorilla Tape right here to wrap around it as tight as I can. This Gorilla Tape can also be used on the inside of your rim uh, to keep uh, your tubeless tire tubeless. There's that. 
Spare shirt, always take two shirts on the adventure. That's a spare tech shirt. Here's my full on sleeping bag. This is a 100% down bag, super lightweight, puffs up really good, keeps you really warm. Right there. And right here is a full on three inch ground pad, super easy to blow up. Uh, this thing has been a lifesaver. Feels like you're on a big water bed with this puppy right here. Super key if you like to sleep comfortably. And right here is a full on pillow, blows up, super simple, uh, with the new advanced valves that are easy to blow up and they, you don't have to worry about air leaking out. You just blow them up and put the plug on, you're good to go. That's a pillow. And right here is a patch, uh, just in case uh, I get a hole in my uh, bivy bag, this will help seal it up right there. And I think that's it. And that is one heck of volume of a rear bag right there. So let me just talk about a couple more things on this bike that are key. Um, number one is I run 29 inch wheels. Uh, it's the best rolling wheel that you're gonna have out there. So keep, a, keep the taller wheel rather than a 27.5 if you can. Disc brakes are key, specifically disc brakes that are cable activated. You do not want your hydraulics to blow out, out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, it's not cool, not good, and you'll be really bummed. It'll end your ride a lot of times. So I run a cable activated front and rear right there. Um, and then over on this side of the bike, walk over here. My gearing is a one by, so we can see this right here. This is a one by system and I basically have a 42 back here and, uh, and then I go down to a, a 10 right here. So it's a SRAM cassette and then my big chain ring is just a 42 right here. No front shifting, it's not needed and uh, rear shifting only. And one of the little features I have on this bike is I actually have a dropper post on here. Um, you can kind of, it's just a one inch dropper or a two inch dropper I should say. And, but it doesn't work so well with your, your big bag all loaded up. You have to kind of loosen your straps up, but it is kind of nice having a dropper just to lower it a couple inches so you take the stress off your back. Um, and then everything else on this bike is uh, just really durable stuff, but not overweight. So you got to make sure that you uh, cut where you can on the weight, but don't run chintzy cheap stuff because you'll regret it when you're out there. So other than that, um, uh, just be comfortable. Again, I've got uh, drop bars to keep things comfortable. I've got double uh, wrapped handlebars with actual foam grips down here on the bottom you know, because a lot of times your hands will go numb right in here and go right up your arm. So I've got full on extra foam on the, on the grips here. And uh, then of course, you know, whatever you're wearing is that's what you're gonna take with you, so. All right guys, so there you have it. That's what uh, is on this bike or in this bike. Um, being really efficient with uh, using up all your space but keeping everything aero. And um, uh, just kind of thinking about uh, how you Need, what you need on your bike that's most important to your survival when you're out there. I always found that it's always to be over prepared and rather than under prepared because it can completely end your adventure if you just don't have a warm enough jacket or you don't have um, you know an extra pair of underwear or your socks aren't wool, your feet freeze or you break something on your bike and you just can't fix it because you just don't have that part. So you really got to think about it. And uh, I would say this too, that it's key to set your bike up and then go out and ride on it two, three, four months before you go on your big adventure. To wear through your bike, see where your vulnerable points are, uh, your weak points, and then figure out how to fix them. Make sure you're comfortable on your bike. Make sure you um, have all the space utilized on your bike. So I've had some really great trips in the back country over the years from Death Valley to Wyoming and Montana, across Utah, three times around Nevada, uh, in multiple day, two day, three day, four day trips. And uh, I go out there and it's just incredible to be out there in the middle of nowhere to enjoy beautiful scenery and just this incredible land that we have and to do it all under your own power and have that feeling like you're kind of one of the 
uh, one of the explorers going across the West for your first time or the first time and seeing things that other people just will never see in their lifetime. Now you can do that on something like this. It's just an incredible experience. So everybody, make sure you're prepared, plan your trip ahead of time, utilize what I've uh, talked about here and see how these work with you and go out and have a great adventure. Hope to see you out sometime on the trail. Thank you.